Welcome to a very special Five on Five. We are at room 117, classroom 117 at the SOU RCC <laughs> Higher Education Center. Governor John Kitzhaber, thank you for joining us. You bet. Glad to be here. All right. Our pleasure. So tell us first off, uh, rural Oregon isn't faring nearly as well as the metropolitan parts of the state. Uh, in some areas, we're seeing depression level unemployment. What hope can you give rural Oregonians that things will get better? Well, I think the key to a lot of the rural economy is our natural resource base. You know, that's traditionally been a foundation of Oregon's overall economy. I think it can and should be again. Uh, the most obvious uh, path forward here is to try to f unbundle the ONC conundrum. Mm -hmm. And I had a meeting uh, yesterday, a three-hour briefing with the BLM, trying to get up to speed on the various issues and what's changed since the Northwest Forest Plan was put into effect now 20 years ago. We've hired Tom Tuckman to work full-time out of my office. He was actually very involved in the development of the plan. We're doing a 60-day sort of listening period, talking to all the various stakeholders. The idea is to try to, to develop an Oregon-centric consensus about the path forward and then take that back to Congress uh, in January of next year and see if we can uh, develop a more sustainable uh, way to manage those forests. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we heard from Simon <coughs> Hare earlier in the meeting you just got out of, uh, talking about how they are... Uh, Kind of the, the front the front runners, if you will, for this is, is we're seeing something that this could very well happen in Douglas, Curry, amongst other counties. Uh, is this really a priority for your administration? It is a priority. I think that we have to realize, though, <clears throat> it's going to take a little while, even if we can get consensus on a new management plan, more balanced management plan. Uh, we have a couple of counties <clears throat> that probably are going to get into real difficult. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Of course. Uh, straits. Even before that happens, you got uh, you know Coos, Curry. Uh, you've got Lane. So I think we need to be figuring out how we're going to respond to those counties, particularly and help with uh, public safety issues uh, as, a, as a separate but very important issue. Okay. Uh, are you aware of the disagreement between JPR and SOU, and what are your thoughts on that relationship? Well, I am uh, aware of it. I think you've got groups of people, all of whom have the community's best interest in mind. This needs to be, involve a mediated solution. We need to uh, keep it out of the courts and keep it in the community, and I think that um, uh, at the end of the day we can work this out. Okay. Uh, drugs in the I-5 corridor, what can you do? Well, that's part of a much larger issue. I mean, uh, a lot of those drugs are passing, passing through from California to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to Seattle and beyond. Um, you know, we are pretty strapped right now at the state level just managing our only public safety system, I think, and I don't want to pass the buck, but I do think this is an issue for the, uh, for the DEA and, uh, and the federal government, and we've, uh, you know, our congressional delegation is very uh, aware of that. I think one of the things the state can do is to continue to ensure that people have uh, the ability to find jobs uh, because uh, uh, jobs and, uh, and uh, uh, being able to take care of your family is a, is a huge buffer against, uh, against uh, drugs. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Much more with Governor Kitzhaber in just a moment. Stay with us. <coughs> Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with the SOU RCC Higher Education Center with Governor John Kitzhaber. Governor, thank you again for giving us a few you minutes. Bet. All right. So where in your priority list is early education for children? That really is at the top. It's really clear to me that uh, when kids arrive at kindergarten ready to learn, when they're reading at level at, in third grade, they have a much higher likelihood of actually graduating and not dropping out. And you know, a lot of dropouts become involved in the criminal justice system, involved in the social support system. <clears throat> so one of the, the sort of the foundation of our education reform is just making sure that every child uh, in Oregon actually arrives at kindergarten ready to learn. So we've redesigned the early childhood delivery system, and I'm actually very excited about the prospects. Uh, it seemed like when, when you announced that, some, a lot of districts were, were concerned about where the funds would come from. How, how are we progressing with that? Well, actually, we increased funding in the early childhood area, even in the, in the last budget. Uh, and we also believe that by consolidating the system and streamlining the system, we can actually provide those services much uh, more cost-effectively than we're, than we're providing them now. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what happens to Oregon's medical plan if the Supreme Court uh, repeals President Obama's health care plan? So that we, we wouldn't be directly affected. We've got a five-year agreement with the federal government to implement this plan. Uh, what we're really trying to do is change the way healthcare is delivered and, and focus it more on prevention and taking care of chronic conditions in the home rather than in the hospital. The biggest implications if the federal government throws out the Affordable Care Act is those federal resources won't be coming into the state to expand coverage in the Medicaid population or provide subsidies to individuals and small businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know you're, you're busy, you're, you're bouncing around uh, site to site here today. Is there something you want to tell our viewers that you may not be able to, to do in, in all these many jump spots you're doing? Well, I mean, there's so much going on down here. We were at the Maslow Center today. We were, t we were talking about some of the collaborative efforts. We just got funding today, uh, $7.08 million from uh, the feds for the Siskiyou Railroad. So there's a lot of good things going on down here. I would just simply say that the people in Southern Oregon and this community are among the best collaborators, people who know, you know adversity but have said, you know, no, things are tough, but we're going to work together and, and make it happen. And it's very inspiring. Governor, great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure.
Stay with us. We'll be right back.